Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Can you sit, please? I wish for us to reflect on some words from the book of Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter and the part of the 11th verse. But the poor shall not cease out of the land. The poor shall not cease out of the land. In the passage we had as our first lesson for this morning, we have a portion of the sabbatical laws which are found in the book of Deuteronomy, the sabbatical year of release. And here we have the writers reminding the people of their duty towards their fellow human beings, of their duty to those who are less fortunate in the community. And what he also highlighted is that just as is the case in our time, in that case, people always had some reason why you shouldn't give to the poor. Why you shouldn't give X, Y, or Z something because. And in this particular story, the reason that persons were not going to give to the poor is because next year will be the year of release. They'll be all right next year. You don't have to deal with them this year. But what I've always found interesting is this saying, the poor will always be in the land. The poor will never cease out of the land. What really causes poverty? There are several reasons why persons are poor. I guess some will point out that the obvious is that persons have made wrong decisions in life. And that may be true in some cases. Persons may have made decisions with the hope that things will come through, and they didn't. There's a saying in our world that there's no such thing as luck. Luck is merely when preparation meets opportunity. But the problem is that for some persons, opportunity never comes. They've made all the preparations just like anyone else. But opportunity never comes. And so I've highlighted that to make the point also that chance happens to everyone. As we reflected on last week, there are storms that can enter one's life. There are things that can happen, which has nothing to do with how good or how bad one may be. It is just the way life is. And so, one great thinker once said, There but for the grace of God go I. There but for the grace of God go I. In other words, some people are in poverty because of no fault of their own. It is just the way life is for them. They may have done all the good things that other persons who are successful would have done. But nothing ever came through. They just met obstacle after obstacle. And they found themselves in a position where, in spite of all the good they've done, they look around them and see others thriving. And they develop what we refer to now as FTT, the failure to thrive. They lose hope. They lose hope in the, wor the way the world operates. They lose hope that anything good can possibly happen for them. And there are persons in our community like that. There are persons in our world like that. It often pains me when one watches some of the media stations and see the conditions under which persons live in other parts of the world. Images like those people in Africa who are busy tilling the soil. And you can see that nothing can grow there. It is loose dirt. Nothing will happen there. But they are hopeful. And that is not something they have done on their own. 
it is just the way life is. And then we see persons, for example, in Latin America, we see the little children walking in the rivers and in the streets with puddles of stagnant water and sometimes bathing there and picking up things from there just to get something to eat. What has those little children done? What have they done to put themselves in that position? It is just the way life is. But the whole thing about poverty in our world is poverty is not only about those who are going through it. It is about those who have the means to help. As St. Paul pointed out, the church at Macedonia, they didn't have much. But when they heard that their brothers and sisters elsewhere were in need, they took the little they had and they gave. It's a test of our generosity. It's a test of our Christian stewardship. It's very much like that story in the Gospel where Jesus and his disciples encountered a blind man. And his disciples asked him, Lord, who has sinned? This man or his parents? And Jesus said, neither of them have sinned. He has been born blind so that the glory of God may be revealed. He is that way to test, to see how much we really love God and how much we are willing to walk the walk that we talk. It's really a test for our Christian stewardship. So poverty is in our world, it, it will always be there because chance happens to people. And we must remember that because we may be okay now, because things may be going for us, going well for us at this point in time, it doesn't mean that things cannot change tomorrow. And therefore, every opportunity we have to show some human kindness to our fellow human beings, we ought to do so. Because tomorrow may be our turn when we are in need. That is the nature of life. That is the test that is before us as a Christian people. But there are other causes of poverty as well. Perhaps poverty will always be in our world because poverty is relative. A poor person in 2015 is probably a well-off person in 1940. It's just relative. That's, that's the nature of, of life in our world as well. But there's an aspect of poverty that can be avoided. It is that which is caused by unjust structures in our world. There are some societies in which the laws are so fashioned that some persons cannot rise above the state of life in which they are born. One well-known one is the caste system in, in, in India. When persons are born in the caste, the lowest caste, which is deemed the untouchables. When you're born in the untouchable class, there's really no upward mobility for you. And so what parents do is sometimes when a child is born, they'll cut off the hand. So that they become a beggar and at least bring some money into the household. That, those are the realities in which some persons live in our world. That is the nature of life in our world. But there are also unjust structures in society that fly below the radar, that operate under the guise of justice. But when one really analyzes them, they're not. And one, one such system has to do with the way the political elite seek to maintain a certain portion of the masses in certain conditions. I always remember a calypso 
you know I had to go there. By a young man called Kurt Allen in Trinidad and Tobago in the 1990s, the early 90s. And the song was, it's only sport that is lifting the country up. He was singing about the contribution of sports to the country because he said, all the other persons in leadership positions have failed us. And he made a comment about the political elite. He said, Laventil, which is one of the poorest places in Trinidad, he said, Laventil is PNM's holy ground. But conditions there are worse than in Shantytown. They vote religiously for PNM. But at no point in time is there any effort to lift them out of the mire of their conditions. And there's a reason for that. You have to keep the masses dependent upon you. And when the masses are dependent and you give them little handouts, they become loyal to you all the time. It is what I referred to some time back as Panem et Circensis, the old Roman form of governance. You keep the masses occupied with entertainment and handouts so that they do not even realize the state that they're in. And so there are some systems, even within our region and perhaps even in our country, that place persons in a position of poverty and seeks to keep them there. You probably say no such thing exists in Barbados. Maybe not, but there is something else. We always encourage our children, as the mighty Sparrow said, children go to school and learn well. Otherwise, later on in life, you will catch real hell. But we never explain to them what that really means, at least within our context. Because many children have gone to school in this country and learned very well. But they've come out and caught real hell. Through no fault of their own. Because we have developed a society where it is not what you know, but who you know. That determines whether you'll climb the social ladder. And there are far too many persons in our country who have not had the ability to live out their call because they've been kept there because of their social status or just where they came from. Because we still have a practice in this country where in order to get a job interview, Depending on where you live, you have to give the wrong address. You have to give the wrong address. You know why? Because just as the attitude of Nathaniel when he heard about Jesus being from Galilee, from Nazareth, what was Nathaniel's response? Can anything good come out of Nazareth. We still treat certain parts of our country in that way. And so though our children have gone to school and learned well, many of them find themselves unable to provide for themselves and their families the things to sustain basic human life. And our gospel today really deals with that. It deals with how we should treat to the poor in our community. It reminds us that treating to the poor is not only about providing material things. That is good and that is necessary. And I should point out that a program is coming on stream here at St. George where we are implementing a deacon's cupboard being spearheaded by one of our 
very forth-thinking persons. And we're going to be having monthly collections of food with food stuff, non-perishable goods. All we're asking is that when you go to the supermarket and you're shopping for yourselves, just put in one item or two items to remember those in our community who do not have the basic necessities. And there are many persons in our community who do not have. And in 2015, no one in Barbados should go to sleep hungry. There's too much available to us. So that program will be coming on stream. We're not asking you to buy the entire supermarket. Even though if you can, we won't refuse it. But when we're making those collections, just remember that there are persons who are out there really in need. And their plight is a test of our generosity. Their plight is a test of our Christian stewardship. But there's more that must be done. Because as I said, reaching out to the poor goes beyond the provision of material things. In our gospel today, there is something social taking place. Jesus was called to the house of this Jewish leader. And before he got there, some men came to him and said, it doesn't make any sense, she's already dead. Oh, no problem going there. But Jesus persisted and he went. What was happening there is that for these men, there was a social barrier set up that they didn't want Jesus to cross. And that social barrier was anybody who came into contact with a dead body defiled themselves. And they were seeking to prevent Jesus from going there. There are structures set up in our society. There are barriers that prevent persons from experiencing the risen Christ. And many persons will try to encourage us not to go there. Don't worry with it. This is the way it has been all along. Don't trouble that. And so as long as it doesn't affect persons personally, they're comfortable living with these barriers. As a Christian people, we cannot be comfortable with barriers. We must, like Jesus, in spite of all that is said, go into that house and tear down the barriers. Just during the course of this week, I was speaking to a young person who held a very prominent position in this country, who suddenly had the rug pulled from under them through no fault of their own. No evidence that they've done anything wrong. They've provided some trumped up charges which haven't stuck. And that person lost their job. It's a person with a family and two children that depended on that income. But the reason they lost their job was not because of something they did. It is because someone who was connected to someone was waiting in the wings and looking for work. Someone who was connected to someone who was waiting in the wings to get a job. And so this person because they know no one and they have no connections. They are now out there and possibly will find themselves in dire straits not long from now. So there are systems. 
There are systems in our society that drive persons to poverty. There are systems in our society that ensure that some people take their place. And as long as these systems exist, we cannot be comfortable as a Christian people because we have an obligation to ensure that the poor are taken care of. We have an obligation to champion the cause of those who have been disenfranchised by way of injustice. And so today's readings are for us. They're reminders to us that there are persons out there who are in need because of various circumstances. And we must be able to reach out to them and cater to their needs, be they material or simply providing a voice for the voiceless. Standing up for the cause of right in the face of injustice. We cannot sit back and be comfortable when there are persons in our community who are struggling for survival because they lack the basic necessities to sustain human life. And so it is true, for various reasons, the poor will always be with us. But it is our duty as people of God to ensure that we offer as much comfort to those who are struggling in the midst of their affliction. And so I challenge us all, when our deacon cupboard comes on stream and we make that appeal for food items for those who are less fortunate, I encourage you to give generously. And like the Church of Macedonia, give according to your means. Give according to what you can give. Every little bit counts. To the man who has nothing, a little is a fortune. But they also challenge us that when we encounter injustice anywhere in our system, when we realize that the rights of persons are being trampled upon, and they're be dri being driven to states of poverty because of the injustice perpetuated by others, we cannot remain silent. We must speak out against these injustices. And so an obligation is laid upon us as the children of God. An obligation is laid upon us as stewards of Christ to live out the name that we bear. For Jesus was one who cared for the needs of the poor in a material way, but also championed the systems of injustice of his time to ensure that the poor were liberated. We are being called to do the same in our various spheres of life and in our collective ministry as a church here at St. George. The poor will never cease out of the land. And as long as that is the case, neither shall there cease generosity and charity from the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and never living God, we give you thanks for calling us into your service. For the wonderful example of Christ our Lord, who through his acts of love, his acts of charity, raised the poor of his time from the mire that they were in, but who also through his championing the cause of right and tearing down the barriers of injustice in his time, liberated the poor. Grant us the courage Grant us the strength, grant us the zeal to follow where he has led the way 
so that those who find themselves disenfranchised, those who find themselves unable to sustain themselves by the provision of the basic things of this life, may find comfort through our acts of charity, generosity, and advocacy. And grant, Lord, that what we say with our lips, we may believe in our hearts. And what we believe in our hearts, we may show forth in our lives daily. For your name's sake. Amen.